So there will be a test at the end of this session. So you need to study and prepare for it. Have you been studying already? Did you read well, your Well, I, I was up half the night <laughs> reading the manual and I fell asleep. I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Very good. <laughs> and I believe Carol also invited folks to ask questions, unmute themselves and ask questions during the during her presentation if they had any questions. Right. We, I will pause at certain points in the presentation to ask if there's any. But before I go too far and you have a pressing question that's really causing you to not stay focused, interrupt me. I'm cool with that. And we can have a conversation and then I can continue after that. Well, and, and please use the chat feature too. Again, I think our district has become very Zoom ready. And the chat, of course, is at the bottom of your screen, usually in the bottom middle in that black bar that changes to little icons when you move your mouse cursor down there and that you can find that, that chat. Then between Deepa Venkat, the, our Zoom host and, and our uh, coach chair, our club coach chair, will watch for those and be able to bring that into the session. So any more housekeeping before we officially introduce the session? I'd like to say hello, Lou, welcome. Well, let me go ahead too and, and mention that what we have out here and it is an opportunity. It is truly an opportunity for us and for each person as an individual. Perhaps you've been debating, should I be a club coach? Maybe you're already signed up and wonder what now? You may be feeling overworked or underappreciated, not sure if you've had a positive impact. Today, our distinguished guest, Carol Prohinsky, will share insights on how to become an exceptional club coach to save our struggling clubs. And we do have clubs that need that help. She's a 13-year member of Toastmasters. Carol Prohinsky completed her two-year term as international director just last week. She's led the transformation of several clubs in Michigan, including clubs like Insights of Brighton from six to 23 members. The C Division advanced speakers had eight, brought them up to 24. MSU, simply speaking, from also six to 24. She also had some failed coaching efforts. Carol is a graduate of Second City Improv in 2010. She earned Toastmaster of the Year in 2011, three Distinguished Toastmaster Awards, 2012, 2015, 2017. She is a member of three clubs, two of those are advanced. And then on the Michigan State campus, she is the, I've got to get my notes back in order here. Oops, they scrolled away from me. Okay, on the Michigan State campus, she of course is a professor. She loves to teach undergraduate negotiations and the capstone course in supply chain management. Today, Carol will share her thoughts on how we can become exceptional club coaches. Please join me in giving a warm Zoom welcome to our distinguished Toastmaster, Carol Perhinsky. Well, thank you, Christy. Thank you, Christy. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you, District 50, for the warm welcome. I'm going to go ahead and open up my slides, if I can. There it goes. And what do we mean by becoming an exceptional club coach? Now, some of you might be saying, I think I have an idea of what a club coach is. But why do I want to be one? <laughs> I might want to be one, but I'm not positive it's actually a good thing. Uh, it sounds like work. Well, the reason I have selected this particular opening slide is that it represents fabric, woven material that has formed together to create something strong and direct with us to support us. Maybe it protects us from the weather Maybe it protects our children. Maybe it's because together we are stronger. And that to me is what the club coach is about. The club coach is establishing this foundation, this foundation that allows our community, not just Toastmasters, but our community be strong. 
you were invited somehow, some way, you learned about Toastmasters, you became involved, and it has transformed you. You're stronger and better because of it. What if there was no Toastmasters that you could have been part of? What if there was no way for you to have learned what you needed to learn at that point in time in your life? That would have been sad, wouldn't it? And so when we look at, when I look at Toastmasters, I think that fabric, that fabric with the community, that outreach is so critically important. So if we have a club that isn't performing well, I want to make it stronger because it's the people out in that community that need to come. And if they don't have a club to go to, whether it's in rural Texas somewhere or in some metropolitan area, if they don't have a club to go to that fits with their schedule, with their lives, then they're not going to get the benefits of Toastmasters. So that's the foundation. That's the premise that I'm working with. Um, and I believe that there's magic involved. Why? I mean, does anybody like magic here? Are you into magic tricks? Well, I'm talking about real magic, not magic tricks. This is the transformative or transformative power of these club coaches. They are not the magicians. And I'll explain that in a little bit. But they do wave a magic wand. And that magic wand enables the leaders of the club to transform it, to be stronger and more capable of attracting the right members for that club, the right community members for that club. So let's go ahead and dive into exactly what is a coach. All right, some of you are missing your sports. I don't blame you. It is a very important part of our society. Well, it's an important part of every society that I know of. Um, and so sports. This is a team of volleyball players, and I'm going to focus on that lady in the white shirt in the center. She is our coach. And I say our coach because we're just watching and, and, and paying attention. And those people around her are the team. The team is responsible to win the game. It is not the coach that wins the game. These coaches on the sidelines cheering for the members of that team. And the coach is responsible for making sure that the individuals on that team are capable of performing to their best. So whether it be spiking, whether it be setting, whether it be, you know, catching a dive, all right, whatever it is that she is helping those team members perform at their best. And part of that is skill oriented, part of it is motivation and engagement, enthusiasm. It all comes together to make that coach strong. So today, what I'm going to be covering, just an overview, is this dynamic between the club coach and the club itself, or the members of the team. And we'll be talking about things like goals. Now, the goals of the club coach, the so goals of the club. We'll be talking about eligibility, what makes a club eligible, what makes a coach eligible. Why would a club be motivated to get a club coach? Why would a coach be motivated to be the coach? And what are some of the common reasons for failure? What are some of the things that cause the club not to succeed or the coach not to succeed? And they're different lists. Now, in addition to these things that I'll be covering, I'm doing a little bit of back and forth. If anybody feels like dancing with me, we can just go ahead and dive, dive. All right, a little bit of back and forth. All right, we also have this other category and I'll be spending some time and sharing some stories about my first visit to a club that needed a coach. It was when I was area director. I'll share that with you. And then I'll look at district structure, in particular your district and the structure of your district. And then I'll be examining some of your resources that are available to both the club members as well as to the coach to help support them with the journey of becoming that magical, exceptional club coach. Now, the resources on this particular slide are focused on the Toastmaster International resources, but the reason I covered district structure is that you also have many resources within your district, whether they be in a leadership role or perhaps they are a coach themselves, which is a different type of leadership role, or they were a coach in the past. So you have tons of resources available to you. You're not doing this alone. And the last point is to talk about continued success. How do we make sure that as a club coach, we are going to leave this club capable of performing successfully from now and into the future? And that to me goes back to our goals. My goal 
and the reason I think that this is such an important topic is that I want us, all of us, that become club coaches to make sure that club will never have a need for a club coach again. Does that mean it happens? No. But I, I want us to aim for that. And if we can do that, that makes us even happier because we know we left our mark. And that community has the needs of those resources, those Toastmasters, to be successful for their future. All right, so what's the club's goal? Now, the club's goal is that they need to be ach achieving distinguished status. And the coach will help that club achieve distinguished status, not doing the work, but to help the members figure out how they can achieve distinguished status. So they need to achieve distinguished status by June 30th of the current year or by June 30th of the following year once they've been assigned a club coach. So they basically have up to two years. So if you're assigned as of right now, and Christy's standing by, ready to sign you up today, and so is Deepa. All right, so if, if you're interested in signing up today, what they want to do is say, okay, you have all of September, October, all the way through to June 30th, and then you have the next year if you don't achieve your goals this year, the club doesn't achieve the goal this year, you have basically almost 1.75 um, months, sorry, 1.75 years to achieve distinguished status as a club. All right, now let's talk about becoming an exceptional coach. What are your goals? You must, and this ties back to the first one, you must help that club achieve a net growth of five members, meaning that they have to end the year with five more members than they started. The club must also achieve at least five distinguished club points. And this is the goal that I added, which is the club must become healthy now and for many years into the future. We want to see that that vibrancy that you're going to establish with this club. So what makes a club eligible, you might say? Well, is any club eligible? And the answer is no, no. If a club has zero members, they are not eligible to receive a coach. If a club has 13 or more members, they're not eligible to receive a coach. If a club is suspended, or actually closed and hoping to recharter or re reestablish themselves, reinstate is the formal word, they're not eligible to receive a coach either, even though it sure would be nice if they had a coach. All right, but they're not eligible. So the clubs that are eligible have between one and 12 members. In addition, if a club already has an assigned coach, or two coaches, they have a maximum of two coaches. So um, if they already have two coaches, you can't assign another coach to them. So clubs, um, for leaders that are listening to this, I wanna encourage you, if you are eligible for a coach, figure out how to get a coach. And the best way is to talk to your area director. Area directors, if you're in the room, we're listening to this later, if you are looking at clubs and you're visit, getting ready to visit club and you see that they have less than 12 members, between one and 12 members, and they don't have any coaches assigned, then I want you to make sure that that gets talked about when you visit the club, that they are eligible. And to do that, you need to include some important factors. There's some worries that that club has involved. Are you gonna change our culture? If I, assign, if I say yes to a club coach, are you gonna change who we are? And that's very important. We'll talk about that later, okay? All right, so let's talk about District 50. And I went ahead and with Christy's help, I, I gathered all of the information on your different clubs and divisions. And rather than listing the different clubs that are eligible for a coach, I wanna say that every division has the ability to find a club that is eligible for a coach. And so out of 53 eligible clubs in your district, we have eight in Division E, minus the two because they already have two coaches assigned to them. So you're left with six clubs in Division E that are eligible for a coach. Division F, seven, M, nine, P, seven, S, turns out it's five left over ready to receive a coach. T, eight, and V as in Victor, victory, five. All right, so each of these divisions has clubs ready to receive a coach. So if you are interested, you should be able to find a club that fits your needs and your schedule, um, especially in today's virtual world. 
So I, I'm encouraging you to figure out which one is the right one for you if you want to become a coach. Now, let's go on. All right, so what makes you eligible to be a club coach? First, you have to be a member in good standing. In other words, pay your dues. That's it. <laughs> and then you cannot be a member of that club at the point of time when you are being assigned that club coach position. Now I say be careful with that. That's the area where people tend to get into trouble, which is that they say, oh, I'll become the coach. I request to get the coach. I sent that off three days ago, but you haven't officially been assigned the coach position. Do not become a member until that becomes official. And if you're not sure, I want you to reach out to the experts that are in your district to say, am I officially assigned yet? Make sure you are officially assigned before you become a member of that club. And even if it's another three weeks later, you just wait. You'll get to be a member, but just wait, okay? Um, now, who does the assignments? Woohoo! We got a, a couple of great people doing the assignments. We got our district director and our club growth director. They are standing by, like I said earlier, waiting to submit the request to World Headquarters. Now, before they actually submit to World Headquarters, they're going to wait for two things. One is the club coach says, sign me up. And the other is the club themselves says, sign that person up. All right, and, and they want both of you, the club members and the club coach to say, we want to work together. And before you say, we want to work together, you need to visit that club. You want to make sure it is a good fit. And even after you visit, it still might not be a great fit. But, but if you have your goals and you want to accomplish it, you will try to figure out how to overcome whatever lack of fit is it there, all right? And I'll explain again in a little later. Now, I did see that we had somebody mention something in chat. Is it something I should be pausing for? Is there a question? No, no, no. I was just affirming what you were saying about making sure that you are you are listed as a club coach. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. If it comes from multiple people, it makes us even remember it more. I have seen too many problems with that. Um, and so I, I do want to make sure that people are, who are interested in coaching officially get that, that receipt of they are now officially assigned. Thank you so and much. I want to make another comment, Carol. Sure. I, I think the Toastmasters International does email the member confirming that they have been assigned as a coach, right? Yeah. They do. When they yeah. let the club road director know, they also let the member know. They, so. they email the member today as well as they will mail a package to the member who gets assigned as a coach. So once you're officially assigned, you get an email and then you'll also get a package a couple weeks later. And I have a quick, uh, quick question. Can you go to your profile and see somewhere that you have been assigned as a coach also? online uh, okay the best way and i'm gonna i'm thank you for asking i don't have a slide on that but the best way is to go into the dashboards all right once you open the dashboards which is on my resource page in case you're wondering what is that address it's dashboards at toastmasters.org i think um, Dash, dashboards dot toastmasters.org right yeah i think so uh, it's at the end um mm -hmm. uh, once you're on that page you go uh, on the left side it says um, daily reports click on daily reports and then one of the daily reports is club coaches right. and click on that and then look for the club and your name and you'll see it okay thank you very good all right and moving on let's see all right so what else do you need as a club coach all right there are some aspects of your personality that matter terribly. This is the hardest job, I think, out of all of Toastmaster roles. Uh, yes, even district director. <laughs> I know, I was that was a hard role, <laughs> but, but um, they're all hard, but I, I think this is one of the toughest ones. First of all, it's a two-year assignment, uh, but secondly, you're working with so many people and they're so stressed. They're so stressed because they want to be successful and they're not. And so you're coming in, you're trying to help them. So some of the things that you need to have as skills to be a great coach are one, you need to be a good listener. Two, you need to develop alternatives. You can't say, here's how you solve the problem and give a recipe to solve it. You need to say, let's determine the alternatives. Which alternative would you like? 
which alternative would you like? Um, and a lot of times when people, and I, I'm speaking now, I was a region advisor for a while. So as a region advisor, when I saw district leaders really stressed, it, it typically was that they were so stressed that they didn't see the alternatives. It's the same thing at the club level. The club officers are stressed, their club isn't doing well. They actually had to say yes to a club coach and that could be kind of demoralizing sometimes. And so you're there to help them see the alternatives, not to do it. All right, um, next one, the third item is that you want to support healthy and fun club meetings. That means going woohoo every now and then if appropriate. All right, at the meeting, you gotta help invigorate this club by adding your enthusiasm, your joy and your smile. And if you have a hard time smiling, you're not the right person. <laughs> Even when things are terrible right now and people are upset, you got to learn how to smile through this process. All right. And um, that is critically important is making sure that you're having healthy meetings, not the bickering type, and that they're fun meetings, truly fun meetings. All right. I did see some more chat. I'm, I'm going to ask for the chat when I finish this slide, okay, if anybody has any comments or questions. Um, the fourth bullet point is that you need to understand the officer roles as well as the meeting roles because there will be officers there that don't know what they're supposed to be doing as their officer position. All right, so if I'm a secretary, I don't actually know what I'm supposed to do as a secretary. At some point, somebody's got to guide us to, to that role. All right, and so that's what the coach does. The other part of this is that the meeting roles, um, sometimes we, I had a Toastmaster Oh, I'm jumping ahead to one of my stories, but I had a Toastmaster that didn't know how to be a Toastmaster. And for 20 minutes, we waited for that Toastmaster to introduce the first speaker. All right, are you, are you just draw, jaw dropping? Um, that's our job as coaches is to come in and help them learn their role as a Toastmaster. So it's not just the officer roles, it's also the meeting roles. And then the fifth point is that we're aiming for achieving club goals and you have to know how to achieve those club goals. Now, what you don't see on here is age limits, right? No age limits on here. You could be any age, even a young new Toastmaster or an older new Toastmaster. All right, and even if you're a new Toastmaster, you are capable of being a club coach. There's no age limits. There's no tenure in Toastmasters, um, but they do, you know, I say they, I mean the leaders of Toastmasters in your district, they want to make sure that you're going to be capable of performing well. And so they are, are going to be looking for many of these uh, bullet points and saying, does this person have the capability of being a great club coach? Okay, I'm going to pause here and ask if there was any questions. Go ahead, Deepa. Yeah, there was one on the chat. Um, Naomi Lawler was asking about Coach U. Um, I remember this, Les, like in the daily reports, there's a couple of codes there. It says Coach and then Coach U. Mm -hmm. I, and for our purposes, I've, we've asked that question. I couldn't yeah. quickly find the answer from Toastmasters International. It's not relevant. It's a tracking mechanism for them. Right. Yeah. You're a coach or you're not a coach know. if you're on the list. Still and you're still a coach and we could say coach you means coach universal no i'm, I'm making this up i'll, I'll try <laughs> or, to find or coach it at the end. or coach you know understanding <laughs> they, th i think they emailed us back christy saying that it's a internal code to track something internally so we don't have yeah. to worry about it from a district perspective that's right that's right and joe joe i am assuming that the club has to ask to have a coach or does Toastmaster just assign one? Oh, no, they oh. have to ask us, the club coach team. So the club coach team, Deepa Venkat, Susie Delagardia, would then make that match that you're interested in that club and that club's interested in you. And then I will make that request on behalf of the district. It has to come from me, but I want our club coach team to help make sure that happens. We have two different request forms, you to be a coach, club to want you. Joe? Oh, well, they recognize that they have a problem and they need help. The, the club must say yes to receiving a club coach. Yes. And, okay. and that very specific club coach, right? That they say, yes. I want Joe to be yeah. my club coach. Now, it is possible the club will say, I want anybody. Save me. 
<laughs> I've seen some of that. Um, I prefer to make sure they're a good fit too. And, and especially as a district leader, I want to make sure that they're a good fit. I don't want to put the wrong person in that club um, because that will create even more problems and that club may not survive it. So it, um, even though they want anybody, I will still try to be particular in getting the right person. Okay, good. Any other comments or questions at this point? Carol? Yes. This is Susie. Hi, I did Susie. Put, I did put in the chat, because you mentioned it's a two-year assignment. I put it only a two-year assignment if you don't reach Distinguished Club by June 30th, 2021. If you do reach Distinguished, then you've completed your club coaching. If That's you right. haven't by next year, then you still have another year to do it. I just wanted to make sure that people don't think it's a two-year assignment automatically. Uh, all right, Susie, you are absolutely correct. I'm going to throw in a little caveat, though. Okay. As a coach, do you think that your club is capable of surviving without you? If not, I want you to hang on. And it won't be official, but hang on. Just for a couple months after the district leaders are new to the, you know, after they've uh, been reappointed and new district mm -hmm. leaders have signed on, help those new district leaders with their new role just for a couple months. Stay with them to make sure that they're going to be surviving um, for the longevity. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll cover this again at the end of my session. Okay. But that, I'm so glad you raised that because some people might be panicking and say, two years, I don't want to do two years. Um, I'm going to ask you to make a commitment that is up to two years um, to make sure that that club stays strong. And, oh, I'm jumping ahead, but you guys are so exciting. <laughs> All right, let me go on if there's no other questions at this point. All right, so what is the coach's motivation? Why would you want to become a coach. There's a lot of reasons. One is we get credit towards that education award. Helps us become a distinguished Toastmaster. Uh, there's public acknowledgement and kudos. Yay! Because you actually did a successful job. You can also align it with the High Performance Leadership Project. That's an optional thing. But you could say, you know what, I'm going to help this club have an open house as an example, and I'm going to use the open house as a high performance leadership project. Now, typically, uh, that is not a high performance leadership project, but um, you might be able to find some project that enables you to say, oh, I can use the high performance leadership project as, as a, a viable option for this um, educational award. Next one is you could be working on developing your coaching skills and or your leadership skills. Both of them are critical for your growth as a leader. And by being a coach, you will get better as a leader. And lastly, it could be a sense of pride in a job well done. Moving on. So let's talk about that Distinguished Toastmaster Award that I mentioned quite briefly. Um, what is required? And here it's required that you be a club coach or a new club mentor. And, and besides either being a club coach or a new club mentor, you must also be either a new club sponsor or speech craft or a youth leadership project. Okay, so I'm mentioning all of this together just to recognize that although um, our focus today is on what I call struggling clubs, clubs that are between one and 12 members, we also have this option of you working on the enthusiastic, woohoo, we got a new club coming up and I'm going to help form and charter this new club. Um, and that that allows you, that this distinguished Toastmaster allows you to get the credit in multiple ways. So if not a club coach, maybe you want to become a mentor. Very different responsibilities. Um, the mentorship is at least six months. Our focus today is not on the new club, so I'm going to skip over the rest of that part of that conversation and just leave it for another day. All right, now I'm going to jump into my storytelling. Insights of Brighton here in Michigan was a club that, as an area director, I needed to visit. So the former area director, now division director, said, Carol, let's go, and I'm going to introduce you to the club members. And so we drove from Lansing down to Brighton. It was a 45-minute drive each way, um, and I got to visit the club. We showed up. There was three people in attendance and nobody else showed up. Three people in attendance. The Toastmaster of the day started the meeting on time, 
very good. And then continued for 20 minutes. I started telling that story a little early, but continued for 20 minutes before he finally introduced the speaker of the day. We had one person assigned for speaking. That person spoke and then we had an evaluator and then the Toastmaster closed the meeting. Uh, I think we had table topics too, and then the Toastmaster closed meeting. So in total, there was five people in the room, myself, the C division director, and three people that were members of the club. The club had gotten down to officially six members, but three of them rarely showed. So even though they had paid their dues, they were, were not attending. What do you do? I'm an area director, and so I said, hmm, they need a club coach. And my division director said, you might want to be that coach. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll sign up. I'll be the coach. And one of the things that it wasn't just me saying yes and them saying yes, one of the things that really struck me during that visit was how closely they paid attention to what we shared with them. We gave them guidance on how to be a Toastmaster of the day. We gave them evaluation feedback on how to improve that person's speech. We gave them guidance on how to grow the club. And they paid really close attention to it. And even by the end of the meeting, they had already transformed many aspects of how they were speaking on the platform. That's exciting. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I have people listening to everything I say and immediately implementing it, it can be really exciting. I was. And I became involved with them. I just signed up for the coach and I was officially their coach for two years. Each year they added about three members and some of those, those three members that hadn't been in attendance on a regular basis started coming back regularly. So we did grow slowly, very slowly, and we were accomplishing educational goals. I did sign up to join them as a member as well. Um, but by the end of the two years, we still had not had a net growth of five. You need a net growth of five or you don't successfully complete your club coaching experience. Now, back in those days, I'm going to say it was like I'm a grandmother or something. Back in those days, um, back in those days, we were not able to be reassigned if the club was still eligible to be a, to receive a coach. So after the two years, I was not reassigned to be a club coach and therefore, I wasn't going to get credit, but I knew after my two years that if I left this club, that they might very well fail. I didn't want that. It was a good club. People were excited to learn. They were sponges, I call it. Daryl, um, anyway, we have this, this sponge concept in Toastmasters, and, and people want to learn. I wanted to be part of that. So I stayed on with them for another two years. And by the fourth year of my involvement with this club, they became distinguished for the first time. We had a blowout party. Yes, a blowout party. It was so exciting. But I didn't get credit for it as a club coach. But between you and I, I fulfilled the requirements of being a great, an exceptional club coach. They have never fallen below 20 once even with any club renewal. They've never fallen below 20. They remain a strong club. You can search for them and find them and they're vibrant, even you know, so vibrant today. After the fourth year, I decided not to renew with them. Like I said, it was a long drive and the snows in the winter, it, was, it wasn't the best, but um, the, I still maintain contact with them six or seven years later, um, very strong club. So I'm sharing this story with you to say, some of the joys of being a, a coach is that that important being able to celebrate the transformative power that you have on the club and the success of the club and it's not about you being successful it's about us being successful the team of us being successful um, and just to let you know in case you're wondering about this particular image on the slide this was used because it represented the actual club we picked this picture because um, one of the guys has a mustache and one of the guys in the club had a mustache and we were a bit crazy and fun. And that is 
one of the other things that needs to be part of the club. And so we had a couple people, it wasn't just me, that went woohoo on a regular basis. Um, and that just makes it a fun environment that people want to be around. Even if you only have like four or five, six people, they say, wow, that was fun. I really enjoyed myself. It was tough. I, I learned a lot, but I, wow, that was fun. And that's what you, that's what else you want. So we use this on our, on the website for a number of years. Eventually they have switched to another website um, front page, but this was one that we used um, with them. All right, so let's talk about your first visit. Oops, went too far. Your first visit to the club. What are you looking for? What are you gonna be looking for? And what are they looking for from you? Okay, it's very important that you have that first visit before you say yes to being a club coach. Yeah, you want to know, am I going to be a good fit for them? Is my, for me, my direct style, is it going to work for them? I have to be careful not to give them a laundry list. All right, I'm, 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 I'm actually jumping ahead again, but a laundry list of everything that they need to change. My job as a coach is to pick out the priorities. This is what needs to change first. And then maybe a month, two months, three months later, I might mention something else that needs to change but I'm waiting for them to make the changes on the most critical things that I deem to be the most critical things. Getting members is usually one of the most critical things. Making sure that it's well-run meeting is another. And if the secretary doesn't happen to know his or her role, that's okay, that can wait. Or the vice president of membership isn't perfect at getting uh, contact information, that can wait. Okay, and so there's certain things that I'll, I'll consider more important than others and I'll focus in on that. Your first visit, you also want to make sure that you're a good fit for the culture of the club. Your job is not to change the club's culture. So if the club is like this crazy, this crazy image, you want to keep that crazy image. If the club is, is rather staid and um, button up, so to speak, or that everybody dresses professionally, are you going to be a good fit for that? Um, and I, I might be focusing on a little bit of superficial things, but when you walk in, do you feel like I'm at home? All right, do you, do you feel like you're at home when you walk into that club meeting? Is it comfortable for you? Um, then yes, you wanna sign up as a club coach. Now they're checking you out too. I highly recommend that they think and consider it. They're asking themselves, are you gonna be a good fit for them? Are you gonna try to change the culture is one of their biggest worries. They say things like, I like my club as it is and having a club coach is going to change things. That club coach is not supposed to change things without the club agreeing to change. So if the club agrees to change, then the club can change. Otherwise the club can say, no, we don't agree to that change. And I've had some coaches, I've heard of some coaches come in and say, well, the problem is that you meet at 7.30 in the morning or 6.30 in the morning, one club. That's terrible. But the members liked 6.30 in the morning. That was something that was very important to them. It was a great start of their day. So pay attention to that. If the, if the coach is saying, no, you must change the time of day. I'm gonna tell you some of the best clubs in terms of distinguished performance, meet first thing in the morning. And some of the best clubs meet at noon and some of the best clubs meet at dinner time, and some of the best clubs meet at 8.30 in the evening. Okay, and I'm, I'm, making, I'm saying it like that to make a point is it doesn't matter what time of day you meet. It doesn't matter where you meet. What matters is the actual meeting. Okay, make it, make it good and make it fun and make it healthy and you're gonna be okay. Make it a learning experience. All right, so let's take a look at your first meeting. Some of the key questions that I ask. Do the members want to learn? Are you interested in helping them with that learning process? Are you willing to make the long-term commitment? And for me, making that commitment of that drive was very important. I had to really think about, am I willing to make a, an hour and a half commitment to drive there and back each meeting? Um, so these are some of the important questions. Joe. How do you deal with this in the Zoom environment? <laughs> Life is a lot easier. 
<laughs> life is a lot of, we don't have to drive so um do i do i have the technology do they have the technology are they meeting online some clubs have, are not meeting online yet a, a few of them um some of them don't especially out in the rural united states they don't have the internet connections or the individuals don't have the technology capabilities they might not have the computer skills or computer depending on their 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 job situation and so these are some of the things that come into play in today's zoom environment that have to be dealt with and um, are they willing to make the investment to get the right technology are they willing to are they somehow capable of getting the internet connection? I had one lady driving to the local McDonald's, sitting outside the McDonald's using their internet so that she can meet with the club. Um, these are, that's a commitment, right? It's a commitment, but she was able to do that. Go ahead, Joe. It also would seem to be really difficult in building relationships. Are you having difficulty time building relationships online? Uh, no, but we already had a very, very strong club before and very strong relationships. I can't imagine how difficult it would be to come into a new group and try to establish a positive, caring relationship through Zoom from mm -hmm. the from from zero. Okay, let me address that. And you're correct, Joe, that there is there is a a barrier of building relationships. And this is where it's really important for you to start making phone calls, having conversations outside of the meeting location, arriving early. Um, so we, one of my clubs, we get there a half hour early just to network and talk and, and ask our guests, what are they thinking and why are they here and who did, how did they learn about the club? Um, so we're having, we're there having these impromptu conversations. We have people staying on afterwards just because they enjoy the camaraderie. Yes, many of us have known each other for years, but a lot of the newbies are just having so much fun just being part of that conversation. I'm calling them newbies. I hope you don't mind to those people that are new. Um, but okay. Joe, Joe, that you're bringing up a really important point, which is how do I build relationships? And I do it through the phone. I get tired of Zoom, especially in today's world, but I say, you know what, can we have a phone call? And I'll have a one-on-one -on -one phone call with people and have conversations. It does take a little bit more time, but it allows people to ask really crazy questions that they might not ask otherwise, and they need to ask them. And these are crazy ideas or crazy questions that are worthy of listening to, and I want to hear them. And so they have ideas and I want to implement them. Or they, I want them to implement them because those ideas are what make that club vibrant. Good, other questions or thoughts? Hey, uh, Carol, you mentioned arriving early and staying late. You're talking about Zoom itself, right? I am. Staying on the Zoom environment. I am. Mm -hmm. and, and also there might be clubs that need help even in doing a Zoom meeting. If they're not meeting at all, and they need a club coach and you feel you have the skills to help a club start meeting back up again, yeah. that would be a great fit as well. I, I ended up as a club coach, I ended up doing that with one of my clubs. They had trouble with Zoom. And so myself and another coach um, stepped in and offered them assistance. Uh, first, making sure that they had a regular Zoom address. So it was the same address each week. And then, um, and then working with them to try to build members. It ended up this was one of those situations where it failed, where uh, the club ended up not being capable of, of getting over their hump. They got down to three members and they didn't have the time to go out and get new members. And th they were just too busy uh, working um, in this environment. They just had too much going on. So unfortunately they ended up deciding to close the club and it's, it's terrible I, I, and it's a rural club. And this is the other thing that bothers the heck of me. So when I talk about the fabric, that means nobody in that community will have access to Toastmasters and they need it. Everybody needs it. Mm -hmm. And Janet, I saw Janet's hand. I saw a hand. Yeah, go ahead, Janet. So thank you for the suggestion about phone calls. I am already assigned as club coach and I haven't tried phone calls because it seems like the, mem the members are all working. I'm the retired person. They're all working. And so they don't have a, they don't have a, a pattern of hanging around on the Zoom because they have to get back to their work. Oh. But I have offered and I've had one already, I'm calling it the club coach corner on a different day so that they can come on their lunchtime 
during that day and they I said you can ask any questions you want and I'll try and get the answers I won't have all the answers I'll try and get the answers and I did have two people the first day and then I have to reestablish the time because now I have a conflict with the period I, you know, the day I established, but um, I'm calling it club coaches corner for that club. That's great. That's great, Janet. And and the other thing is, is um, you don't have to make it so formal and you just say, you know, would you call me or can we find a time that you and I can speak privately? Okay. Um, it's, it's wonderful that you've established this coach coaches corner. I think that's a fun name too. Good. Any other comments or questions at this point? I do have a question about uh, the criteria itself. Okay. Uh, is the criteria for club coaches coming from international or from the district? It comes from international. Uh, some of these, I'm going to go back a couple slides. Um, this list is my list. <laughs> <laughs> and I did pull some of this information from some of the resources that is out there. So from Toastmasters International, I'm not just totally creating it. But the, as a club coach, I've been a club coach about six times now, seven times. Um, yes, these are some of the skills that I've relied on most heavily. I'm sorry, the reason I'm asking the question because I think the criteria is out, outdated in the COVID environment. Right? This, this criteria itself existed way long time ago when we used to meet in person because currently you have clubs that have more than 12 members who are effectively about to die right like they might have less than five six six members at the most that meet in regularly right. and if you do not assign them coaches proactively right mm -hmm. before you know it these clubs will be they'll be survive they'll be like crying for help uh, well, if you could change the rules, I think it might be kind of late. Well, but well, that that is a Toastmasters International requirement. As club growth director in our team, and especially Lou Blackburn as our retention chair, we are unfortunately anticipating some clubs will drop from that 14, 15 to 10, 11, 12 come renewal time. So October 1 is when we will be reaching out to you as an area director saying, look, your club just dropped below the limit. We can get them a coach now before they come back up to 12 if you feel they need that. If they're already strong and they're just late payers, maybe they don't really need a coach. They truly have 15 members. You're going to know that as the area director. That's why those area director reports are so important to us and your, your relationship with the club. So you can help find the club that does need a coach and help us find the right club coach. There may be another member in a strong club in your area who'd be perfect at that because they know the ins and outs, just like what Carol has on the slide. And we would like to get them engaged. You can introduce them and we can make it happen. Does that help? I'm gonna expand on the, I'm gonna expand on this. Um, I think what I hear you also talking about is the clubs that are between 13 and 19 members yeah. or even greater than that might be on the cusp of failing and yeah. I've seen that and it's yeah. so painful because they have the ability and for whatever reason it's not working and they're ready to close um, exactly. there's nothing well this is where the area director comes in and it ties in with what Christy's saying the area director is responsible to help them and if need be step in as a coach temporarily not officially mm -hmm. all right so it's a more of a temporary um, so you're thinking of closing the club because you can't find a location, <laughs> even though you have 20 plus members. Um, I mean, this was my own experience when I was a district director, uh, I freaked out kind of because I'm like, you have 20 more members, 20, you have over 20 members and you're thinking of closing because you can't find a new meeting location. Uh, that club is still around, but it was one of those things that if a club votes to close, we, we can't stop it. And that's where we want to step in, particularly our area directors and up to step in to say, I think we can solve this problem. Let's keep working at it um, and try to be supportive in that way. And this is this is the power of the area directors and the division directors. Yeah, I think the point I was, I understand the rules, right? What I'm saying, I think as a district, we need to bubble up the problem to international. Let them know for this period of time, it makes sense for us if basically you have consistently five people meeting and you have 15 people on paper, maybe you need a club coach, right? So it should not just be numbers purely, right? 
the other are you, yeah. are you saying it's happening because of the the covid oh, environment yes, yes okay and everybody being on zoom that some people in the club are not joining on zoom actually a significant number yeah and therefore the club is at risk of failing yeah yeah the other point i wanted also to to, to say i think area directors that to bring their clubs to distinguished with failing the clubs they should get the credit because I could tell you like one of my clubs had four members they were not meeting at all mm -hmm. and in less than two months they already doubled their membership they went from four to eight i'm working a lot of hours with them to get them where they need to i'm not their official coach i'm getting zero credit for it yeah right well you are the area director well, you're, right exactly you're as area director doing exactly what we want you to do wally that's your job <laughs> That's your credit, okay? I apologize that it's not making you super happy, but it is part of your role. Thank you so much, Wally. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. I think I'm ready to move on to the next slide. And why do clubs fail? Or area directors, Wally, pay a close attention. <laughs> why do clubs fail? They fail for four predominant reasons. This is what I've seen, I'm summarizing. One is failure to lead. Have you ever been in a club where nobody wants to be elected as an officer? Uh -huh. And if they don't step up, they're, they're going to fail. And so this is where I say, well, if you're gonna fail, why don't you just put in your charter work right now? <laughs> I push it in their face, why? I, why do I push it in their face? Because I want people to step up for leadership and know that they have to make a commitment that this club is going to be successful. And they have to make a commitment that I, you and me are part of that success. So leadership. Uh, the second reason clubs fail is membership and marketing, get the word out, um, getting new members in. And right now people are really struggling with that, especially in the online world. How do you hear about my club? Well, we have lots of media and I think sometimes we need to go back to some of the traditional media, which is the newspapers. The newspapers, online um, news venues, let's get our clubs listed as something to do especially now that we're in the online community, that people don't have to be local. Maybe it was a former, go back after your former members to say, well, I know you moved to Tennessee or Virginia. All right, wouldn't you like to join us now that we're meeting online again? Sure, why not? All right, we just have to be creative. This, this bullet point says, uh, focus in on creativity and sometimes some of our old methods, we can pull them back and use them again. Uh, we need to have a commitment to learning. Have you ever been in a club where nobody wants to learn? Maybe they're not using the program, um, educational program materials. Maybe they're, they're spending more time socializing than they are in actual having a conducted Toastmaster meeting. And the fourth bullet point, all it takes is one, but you might have one toxic member that creates an environment that is not worthy of being around. All right, now in the event that you have a toxic member at one of these clubs, that's where you say to the members, can you vote that person out? All right, assuming that they all agree, can you vote that person out of membership so that they are no longer a member of your club? That's one of the best choices. Otherwise, they can kill the club and they will. Um, if they're not getting their needs met, they will kill that club and th that means that, and they don't always understand that they're doing it. They don't, they don't realize why. The other thing you can do with toxic folks is try to change their behaviors. Have a conversation with them, a direct conversation that says, when you do this, this is what happens. This is how people feel. This is how I felt. When you did that, this is what happened in my mind. Okay, and so having them become more aware of their behavior is not necessarily what we think about as Toastmasters. All right, um, in terms of psychology or um, social adjustments, you know, but there is a point where we say, is it minor enough that I could, as a non-professional medical person, step in to guide this person to change that particular behavior so that this becomes a healthier environment to be in? Okay, I'm going to pause here. Any additional comments? Yes, Carol, may Go I ahead? mention something? Yes. In the Wapahachie Club, before I arrived back in 2015, I was told that they had a member who met this criteria as very toxic and 
it had been approached on different occasions, uh, multiple occasions, would not change their behavior, and they said, we're going to vote you out. Well, this person responded with, well, you didn't vote me in, so you can't vote me out. Mm -hmm. and with that advent uh, of that, then the club started with each new member now, we vote them in. Yep. And said, and you yes, you now are accepted by, by a vote as a member of our club. You simply don't join our club. We accept you as a member of our club. That way we reserve the right to vote you out. So we are not going to be put in that, in that situation again. And Skip, all clubs have the right to vote members out even if they did not vote them in. It's clearly stated in some Q&A on Toastmasters International. We ought to vote them in for exactly the reasons you state, that it's understood that it is by membership in, in inclusion because this group wants you to be a member. But even if that didn't happen at club, you can vote them out. That's how the bylaws are written. Thank you very much, Christy, for that uh, clarification. And and Manny had a question on chat as well, Christian, Carol, um, about who votes the toxic member out? Is it the officers or all the club members? Yes. All club members must be part of that vote and assuming there's a quorum. So okay. if, if you have a majority of the members in attendance and a majority of those members vote the person out, then that person is voted out. And can that member go and join another club? Technically, yes. Therefore, therefore, they could create a similar problem at a different club. At some point, the district may get involved. If the person is also creating a toxic environment at the district level, this is where the district can say, this behavior is unacceptable, and the district is now involved. Therefore, they could set up a uh, disciplinary committee this is a whole nother conversation, <laughs> but um, I think we're off topic, but they could set up a disciplinary committee to try to address that. Um, I, I'm going to, if it's okay, I'm going to get off the toxic folk um, conversation. Every time I mention it, people do like to spend some time on it because there are a few people that are toxic. I will say though, don't, give up, don't give up on those toxic people. There are some people that are you might perceive as toxic, but they have many good qualities. And if you can make, I call it tweaks in their behaviors, um, they can become a very fulfilling member of Toastmasters. All right, I'm pausing for more I questions. I see a hand raised. Uh, yes, uh, you just mentioned quorum. Our club has 48 members. 32 members participate in online meetings. What is the quorum? All right, I think what I just heard you say is 32 members are active members. Is that they're, right? They're active, but 48 okay. paid. It, you look at the active members, that's what you're really looking at for voting purposes. Okay, and so that, that would be of, active members. Um, so do you have a quorum of the active members? So if you had 18 in attendance, you have a quorum. I'm saying anything greater, 17 or greater, based on the numbers that you shared. Okay, thank you. Thank you, William. Any other comments or questions? Okay, I am going to move on to the next slide. Thank you. All right, the magician. Ta -da! This is what they expect you to be when you walk in as the club coach. You are the magician. You're going to solve all of their problems. You're going to wave that magic baton or whatever that thing's called. And they're going to be a healthy club. It doesn't work that way. And you as the coach must set up the expectations immediately or they will continue to hold you to this expectation. Um, it's one of the first things I say is that you expect me to be the magician. I'm not going to be. The work is going to be done by you. I will help you. I will guide you. I will be there behind the scenes, but it is not my job to fix this club. My job is to help you fix this club. 
and I'm very direct. I think you know this about me already, and we've only been together for about 45 minutes, is you know that I'm going to be direct, and that really works. <laughs> um, it really works because it allows them to say, oh, and then they can pause and say, you mean I have to make changes? <laughs> uh-huh. And I'm going to guide you. I will guide you on when you need to make that change. So I'm not going to d dump everything at you. I'm, you know, saying, oh, you need to change everything about who you are. I will tell you what the priority is and together we will work on it. So the president might have very different priorities than the uh, sergeant at arms and then a member might have different priorities, you know, who ends up being, let's say, Toastmaster of the day is going to have a different set of priorities that they're working on. As a club coach, I'm working with every member of that club. I'm focused on the officers. So if I can help the officers be successful, the rest of us will be successful. In a meeting, after the meeting, I might talk one-on-one -on -one with one or two members. I try to attend every executive meeting that there is. And I guide people. Sometimes I will make public discussion of a point. Sometimes I will do it in private. I'll give you an example. One of the presidents I was working with had a hard time delegating. I said, you've got to learn how to delegate. Why? Because you have the most amazing team of officers here ready to help you. And yet you keep saying, you're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to do this. Uh, -uh. Your job is to delegate. You're not, to, as a president, your job is not to do it. Your job is to cheer them on and celebrate their accomplishments. And so I guided this president to learn how to delegate. And that is a key responsibility of leaders, officers to learn. And when you get into district roles, you need to learn it even more. And so the role of Christy and Deepa and others is you gotta learn how to delegate. And so um, that's one of the key skills I work with my leaders on. All right, why do coaches fail? There's a lot of reasons. All right, one, I, I got four listed as four general categories. One is they do not understand and they do not listen. That's one of the key roles. So it's like when you walk into a room and nobody acknowledges the elephant. Nobody says anything at all about the elephant, but you see, as the coach, you see that elephant. And yet they're not saying anything. If you choose not to say anything about the elephant, life will continue without addressing it. And so you have to bring it up. You have to talk about it. You have to say, mm, I see this elephant, which you guys like to talk about it now or later. <laughs> and if we wait too long, it's gonna, it's gonna get bigger. Um, so bring it out into the forefront. Um, and it, sometimes you don't always see the elephant until maybe a couple weeks later. That's okay. Now you see the elephant, talk about it, bring it out and say, you know what, I've just noticed this and we need to address it. Um, I mentioned delegation skills already. Uh, already. What I've seen leaders do is some of them will try to do everything. I've seen club coaches do this. They will try to do everything or they're domineering. Dear club coach, it is not your job to do everything <laughs> or anything. Just guide the leaders on what they need to be doing. Um, domineering coaches will fail. People don't want to be around people that are directing them. Um, again, we're not saying you do this. We're saying this would help the situation. So they're guiding us on how to be better and stronger as leaders. Uh, third point is that club coaches fail because they forget to determine the alternatives. They, they see perhaps only one alternative or their members see one alternative. The coaches don't help them see a different alternative. And lastly, I've seen coaches be too negative and others be too positive. They never mention anything wrong. Everything's going great. Or, or you've got this huge, I had this one coach list out 128 items <laughs> of things that needed to change in the club that she was coaching. And, and then I had another coach that said, everything's great. I don't see any problems at all. Let me put it this way. There's a problem. Otherwise, they wouldn't need a coach. Okay, so those are the predominant reasons why I see club coaches fail. Any questions or comments at this point? All right. We have we have a couple tools, Carol, within District 50. Obviously, moments of truth is a great way for the club to reflect on how they're doing. We have a shortcut version called Ten Point Tune Up. 
Okay. Also reward that and club success plans with okay. bookstore box goodies out there. Oh. <laughs> and encourage the club coach to be involved as well as the area director. Wonderful. I love it. And I'm so glad you mentioned those resources because I don't mention them. And I really appreciate you jumping in with that information. I'm going to move on. Um, I wanted to mention the district structure, and I'm not listing everybody who reports to the club growth director. This is Christy Peterson. Uh, I'm mentioning the ones focused on the coaching aspect. Uh, we have the club extension chair. That's Deepa. Welcome, Deepa. Woohoo! All right, we've got the club coach. Wait a minute, Deepa. Actually, I'm the club coach, Oops. me and Susie. <laughs> um, Oops. Who's, who's the uh, club extension? Uh, that's Lou, right? The club extension chair is Carrie Bazan, but focused oh. on new clubs coming in in our oh, case. Oh, I'm so glad you're helping okay. me with this. Um, I just screwed all that up, but we can do it over. <laughs> all right, so we have the club growth director, great person. You want to get to know her. And then we have the club extension chair, no names. Um, then we have the club coach chair. I'm not going to say any names just in case. And then we have, all right, Deepa and Susie. Then we have the membership retention chair. This no. is trying. This is what Walter was talking about earlier, making sure that we get, even though the club might be greater than 12 members, um, they still are having a hard time maintaining their membership. And then the last one is the corporate liaison sometimes gets involved with coaching clubs and making sure that the corporate is still sponsoring and supporting that corporate club. Now also reporting to the club growth director is all of these people listed down underneath, which is the demo chairs, the mentor sponsor chair and the open house chair. And I'm not focusing so heavily on them because they're focused on new clubs or existing clubs that are already strong. Um, or Well, actually open house might cover this as well. All right, anyway, so I totally messed this slide up and we'll just keep smiling because life is okay. I've got great team helping me be supportive. Anything to add? I saw three people chatted. Anything else to add? Or were they just trying to correct me and be nice about it? <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. All right. I'm moving on then. Let's see. Oops. All right. So who are the stakeholders in the club coach process? I know as a club coach, sometimes it feels lonely, especially if there's not another club coach assigned with me. It feels lonely and I've got a huge responsibility to turn this club around and be successful. Everybody is part of my, my group, my, my, uh, my helpers, I'm going to call them. Uh, the area director is critically important to my success as a club coach. I would also like to say the club coach chair is also important. There might be, I, I don't know if our club coaches here are doing extra meetings and webinars just with the club coaches to address concerns and problems. Are you doing that? Yes. I knew you would be. You're an amazing group. Um, but everybody here is involved. Now, I've got lots of people listed. Uh, past coaches, don't forget about them. They may have been successful or maybe not. Um, either way, they still have great knowledge that you might be able to tap into. The club officers are part of this group. The club members club guests. All of them are important stakeholders in your success as a club coach. You can learn from each one of them. The division director is also supportive. Maybe the division director realizes that there's a person that is appropriate to be a club coach. Um, I know we expect miracles from our area directors and our division directors saying, find a club coach. I need a club coach for my club. Um, and we expect them to just wave their magic wands and find one. It doesn't always work that way. But pay close attention, area directors, when you visit clubs, especially the strong clubs, that there might be people interested in new leadership opportunity, such as being a club coach. Tap them on the shoulder saying, wouldn't you like to be a club coach too? All right, it's a great way to do that. Um, and then I've mentioned some of these other people. Toastmasters International, if you have questions or concerns, you can also reach out to them by phone or email and they will get back to you. Um, your job, your community. I want to go back to the fabric of our communities. It's very important that we stay supportive of our end goal, which is supporting that community and being there as a resource for future members. Other comments or questions at this point? Hey, Carol. Um, 
somebody asked about they're getting a copy of the slides you presented today. Sure, not a problem. So um, you'll... you will have a recording. Is that it sufficient enough or do you need the slides? I think the recording will be great because that's what we would like to have our other coaches who couldn't come today be able to hear. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, all right, very good. Moving on. Uh, resources, oh gosh, a laundry list. So many resources from Toastmasters International and I thought I would just briefly mention them. I put the first one on top because it's a wonderful resource, especially for club coaches, how to rebuild a club number 1158 and it is downloadable you can read it online the first class club coach say that three times fast <laughs> number 218f um, the club troubleshooting guide we were talking about that just the other day it's a great one page or two page resource just to see where's the problems um, similar to the moments of truth but not the moments of truth it's something very different actually um, the distinguished club program and the club success plan how to be a distinguished club, because you need to get that club to distinguished status. Leading the club to success, number 13131. I love saying that number. <laughs> it's part of the club officer training materials. Um, the dashboards, it's dashboards, which is plural, dot toastmasters.org, O-R-G. And that is um, when you get onto the dashboards for your district, then you go to the left side, it says daily reports, you click on that. And then one of the daily reports, there's like eight or nine of them that come up. One of them is club coaches. Click on that and you can see if there's club coaches already assigned to that club you're interested in coaching. In addition, on dashboards.toastmasters.org for your district, you can look page down, you can look at every club and see what is their current number of members. So it's another way to say, is this club interested in, in are they eligible to get a coach? Um, and so if you're interested in that, that's a great resource. You will get a club coach pin that you can proudly wear when you visit other people, which we're not doing right now, but I have a number of pins that I can probably, I got the old version, I got a new version. Um, and because I'm such a fan of club coaches, I, when I go to the convention, I make sure I wear my club coach pin. Um, just because I'm so supportive of the, the purpose of what is a club coach. And lastly, I want to mention the club coach frequently asked questions on World's Headquarters website. So if you can't find it directly, just type in the search box, club coach FAQs, and it'll come up for you. It's another great resource that supplements some of the things and many of the things that I've talked about today. Um, now, there was a question not asked today, but it was um, somebody asked it recently, which is um, last year, if I'm a club coach, I also got district leader credit. Is that continuing for this year? And the answer is yes. So for this upcoming year, if you are a club coach, you will receive district leader credit for it. And so if that is something of interest to you, which it is to me now that I'm eligible to be, <laughs> uh, uh, I wasn't eligible last year to get district leader credit because I was an international officer. Um, but this year, woohoo, I can be a club coach. <laughs> so um, I can continue to be a club coach and hopefully I'll get district leader credit for that. All right, and next, how do we ensure continued success? So I mentioned that even though you and as soon as you brought this up earlier, that you might finish your role as a club coach within 10 months, the club becomes distinguished. It doesn't mean that they're out of the woods. And I think it's really important for you as a club coach to continue for a couple more months, making sure they're truly out of the woods, making sure that first they've got succession planning happening, they've got the leadership list in and that they are continuing to achieve distinguished status into the future they've working on their club success plan and that they have the leadership team ready and understanding each of their roles so a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with each leader making sure they know what their job is and that they know how to do it which might mean just getting out helping them get through uh, toastmasters international website to find what they need on the website um, and learn uh, guiding them to to learn that material. Okay, I'm gonna pause here and see if there's any more comments or questions. Joe? 
Did I understand you correctly that being a club coach will fulfill your obligation to as a district leader? Yes. For your DTM? Yes. You are correct, Joe. It has to be a successful club coach that you need to have gotten this club to distinguish by June 30th, 2021. And it has to be by June 30th, 2021. There's no guarantee that the board of directors will extend it. Right. So. This was the offer made last year because we were finishing pathways and we didn't believe there were enough area director slots available. So club coach was also awarded that credit. It was extended because of COVID-19. So it's a silver lining. So absolutely, this is the best year to be a club coach because we need them and you get double credit. You get a year service, you can apply to your DTM, your second DTM. So you not only get the coaching credit, but you get the year of service. And if you're an area director, you may have a, a distinguished area or president's distinguished area because you help this club get to where they need to be. And, and that's something to share with other people. So don't just take it and be woohoo by yourself. If you know that there are other people who could earn a DTM or expect to earn a DTM sometime in the future. So it's not that you have to use that this year. You could use Correct. it five years from now. You can use it whenever you get to through your next year, two paths. So it's a really good time to be a club coach. And the best time to sign up is now in the fall. This is when you can develop that relationship. Just as Carol talked, we can have time to get familiar. So you and those club officers can have that plan to be successful. Waiting till the spring, a little bit too short on time. We really need it to happen now so you can be involved with that club. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go I see on. It. Oh, I'm well, sorry, there's another hand. I didn't see it. Violet, did you have a question? A comment? Um, okay. Just um, to put it out there in Pathways Level 5, there is leading in your organization. Um, if they're club members for six months, they've completed the time frame. They give a speech, but it also asks them to do a succession plan. And it's something that is don't have to share, but I always tell um, any club or in my own home club, please share it with the officers. It's good information to know. But this is a way as club coaches, you can get them on board while they're earning their education award or even in your own home club, asking them to share it so that they have an idea of who would be a good match for the next VPE role or president role or any of the other officer roles. Okay, good. Any other comments? Uh, Flavia has asked a question on chat. Um, and, and Flavia, Susie Villagardia yeah. will get back with you. I don't recall seeing your request come to me yet to appoint you. But if it has, I apologize if it didn't connect all the dots. But if the club has asked for you and you've asked for being a club coach, then I will submit that as soon as we can, can confirm all that information. Great. Thank you. And then a couple of resources were also posted in chat um, and be sure to check them out as well. All right, I want to thank you in advance for filling out the session evaluation form that the district will send to you um, as part of that registration that you gave. I um, actually I sent it out just now in oh, chat. Oh, you did? It's a Google form. Yeah. <laughs> You're so I right on top again. of it. All right, very yeah. good. Well, thank yeah. you in advance for filling it out. And then lastly, I want to say let's wrap it up in fabric, of course that we are going to have an amazing coaching experience this year helping District 50 reach distinguished status as a district and for your clubs to reach distinguished status or better as a club. And with that, I'm going to open it up for last questions. And I know Deepa, you have a slide that you'd also like to share. So I'm going to go yeah, ahead and stop there was just share. One, yeah, there was just a one quick, and thank you, Carol. It was a great session, very useful. Thank you so much for oh, doing this. Welcome. And as we let Carol stop sharing and let Deepa share, I want to also thank everybody and recognize we have another dignitary who's joined us, our region advisor, <gasps> distinguished Toastmaster Charlene Burroughs. Oh. If you don't mind waving, I think your your camera is off, but she's at the bottom. We'll wave at I you. I see, I see her. Yeah. Appreciate that you could join us as well. And that the region advisors, as folks know, are the those experienced Toastmasters, and in Shirlene's case, like many, have been a district director, or district governor, as we used to call them, and are advising district leaders 
across many districts. Take it away, Deepa, some yeah. of the details of how you become a club coach here in District 50. Yeah, so we have just a few minutes. I wanna go over this really quick. As you see, we have a few steps here. The first thing is, if you are interested in becoming a club coach, you can fill out a club coach request form and all those take you to the D50 website. Basically uh, in our club growth page, we have a Google form that you can fill up. This form is for sponsor, mentor and coach because you know you need two out of the three for becoming a DTM. So we kind of combine the request, uh, but you can just select what you like. And then uh, usually Susie and I work with Yvonne, who's our um, sponsor and mentor coach. And then we try to find the right uh, fit for you. But then in the, but if you are interested in becoming a coach, you can also review our list of eligible clubs. We also have this link and we'll send this out. Maybe I can even attach it, uh, the PDF. This is just a one slide. We'll attach this PDF right now in the Zoom chat and we will, I'll work with Thomas to put it up on the website as well in our club uh, growth website. So it, you can go in here and we'll put the list of eligible clubs. So like um, Carol had mentioned earlier, one to 12 members, uh, if they have only between one and 12 members, then they are eligible for a club coach. So you can look at that list to see which ones work for you uh, in terms of you know the timing and the meeting days. And right now the location doesn't matter, but eventually it will. So. If, Visit a few clubs, decide which one you wanna work with to coach to success. So of course you will have to talk to the club officers about coaching the club and make sure you reach a mutual ag agreement because they need to also want you to be their coach and you wanna be also wanting to be their coach. So it has to be mutually agreeable thing. It's similar to what Carol had mentioned earlier. The next step would be that you email us. Susie and me will get this email, clubcoach at d50tm.org. You just let us know which club you wanna coach and send some of your information, which is like your member number, your club name. And Susie, if there's anything else, feel free to add that we would like from, from the members when they email us. But generally what club you need to, uh, you would like to coach and you, some of your basic Toastmaster information. Um, the next step is for the club officer, one of the club officers, generally the PP president, but anybody is fine. Um, they can either fill out the club coach request form. There is a request form, you know, for a club to request for a coach. So they can do that or they can email us to let us know that they would like you to be their coach. So this is how we know that mutually both, both parties are agreeing to this relationship. And then Christy, who is our club growth director, would request World Headquarters or Toastmasters International to make that assignment official. So once that's done, we would like you, we have a lot of information out here in our club growth website. We have a club coach section there uh, in, uh, in one of those drop downs. So please go take a look at the FAQs, at the club coach guide expectations and all of that. Um, and then we, this is just a reminder uh, that a special incentive that we have for 2020, buy one, get, up, get one offer that we just mentioned. So if you successfully complete your club coach appointment by June 30th, 2021, that means you bring that club to distinguished status, you get dual credit. You also get a district's leader credit. So you don't have to be an area director or one of the district leaders to get the second credit. And this is also another reminder that you make sure you do get officially appointed. That means you get an email from Toastmasters International saying you are officially assigned as a club coach before you join that club as a member in order to start helping them out with the membership. Um, sorry, any questions? I couldn't see the chat. I saw some stuff coming up on here. A lot of kudos were on the chat. I just want to say thank you to everyone um, for appreciating this webinar. Yeah, so. Right. And, and we just add that all those signups are on the D50 website, d50tm.org slash club dash growth. And then you see the drop down where you can sign up as a coach where the club can ask for the coach. All that information that Deeper provided is there. We thank, thank you, you so much, Carol, for being here as our expert today, for sharing your knowledge, your experience. I think the tips that are there in terms of what to do and to be a good coach, to be an exceptional <clears throat> coach, and things to avoid are so valuable to us. 
we definitely applaud and thank you for that. We only have a couple minutes left. Any other final questions? It was a pleasure. Um, it was absolutely a pleasure. I had such a great group of people listening in and asking quite on point questions and uh, helping me out too, Christy and Deepa with, with the answers that you provided. It was a nice supplement to the stuff that I didn't have. And I see a few comments on the chat here and Violet and Wally, you had this question about how do you get paired? Yeah, so that was a quick process I went through, but if you are interested in coaching a specific club, make sure you visit that club and that club officer also sends us an email or uses the form to request for you as the coach. Right. And then you send us an email as well, clubcoach at d50tm.org. So I'll just send out the, that PDF document which shows the process. So basically we want, we want both parties, the club as well as you, to let us know that you like to be paired. And once we have that, Christy will go ahead and request to Toastmasters International to officially appoint you as a club coach. I guess my question and, was, and, the clubs may not necessarily know about you specifically, right? So how would the introduction happen? How does that introduction happen? Well, I think there is a list of coaches or clubs, I mean, that qualify for coaches. Remember that is a dynamic changing every day. A club is like recently four clubs have grown and not needed a coach that they've gotten to 13. Will they stay that way come renewals? Let's hope so, but they may, another club may come in too. So there is a list on the d50tm.org slash club growth under club coach section, but but we'll double check because it could have changed. Plus another coach could be there. You visit them just like any other club. Reach out to them via the find a club, contact us. If it's in your area, you already know who the club officers are. So go ahead and introduce. You may or may not want to tell them that you're interested in potentially co coaching them. Just be a guest. Your club attracted my interest. I'd like to come and see how it's going. And then if it is something that you want, open that dialogue with the club officers so that they know that you are interested in that, have some conversation, what your qualifications may be, what experiences you bring from Toastmasters, so that the club can decide that yes. If you have a buddy who'd like to do this, having two coaches is wonderful. Share the wealth, have some different ideas to bounce around. So you could bring another on board or a second coach could come along. There are have half dozen clubs that already have one coach that they could have a second. And there are a number of clubs. We have 53 clubs that qualify for a coach. And I think only eight of them have two clubs already, two coaches already. Thank okay, you. Joe, you had a question. Does being a club coach impact your eligibility to participate in speech contests? It does not impact your ability to participate in speech contests. We would love for you to participate. The only restrictions on speech contests are as an area director. So if you're an area director with a struggling club, we encourage you to take a double role and be a coach because you're going to help that club anyway. Or help us find the right coach because the, the, long, the list of potential coaches is not long enough to satisfy all of the clubs. We want you to help us find more. Yes, did that answer, Joe? I did, but uh, one thing I'm missing from this meeting is you never mentioned compensation and whether and what what kind of pay we're going to get and benefits oh, and that sort of stuff. I tell you, the salary is just phenomenal. The minute you become a coach, your salary doubles. Exactly. Yes. Just like yes. if you become a TLI chair, it triples. If you become a coach, it becomes tenfold. The yes. volunteer, an international no. director, it's a hundredfold. Yeah. And exactly. Sign me up. Sign me up. Zero. <laughs> Absolutely. We'd love for you to be a coach, Joe. It's, right. it's a great opportunity. And to me, it's one of the best challenges. Many times we think about our Toastmaster journey. How do we get to where we are today? Because I see people that are on this call who have definitely done a lot of great things already. Take this as your next challenge. Pay it forward. Somebody help you get to where you are today, 
pay it forward and help the next club that needs your experience, your strengths, your ability to take this on as a challenge to work with them. And we'll all celebrate the successes when they become distinguished clubs and are viable. Just like Carol said, we want these to be sustainable clubs, not just a coach for the year. And then they need another coach next year because they don't have the ability to work on their own. The sustainable club coach is the best opportunity of all. Christy, one more thing if I can add, uh, and I put the link to the dashboard. We've talked about it quite a bit in there, but in terms of Wally looking for a club, any of those clubs with one to 12 active members, just go check them out. As, as Christy said, just go and visit, but strategically, and I'll, I'll go back to this, in addition to making sure you are assigned as a coach before actually signing up to be a member, if that's what you decide to do, check with the club president and the officers, let them know, hey, in order to be successful at being a club coach, you have to be distinguished. So having that plus five members, as well as the education awards, or, or just having distinguished club uh, goals met, and ask them first, because there are clubs that I know, wonderful clubs, that they don't turn in education awards. It's no big deal. They still have wonderful meetings, but they don't turn in education awards. And there are clubs who are not looking to grow their membership. So you want to know that before you're assigned as a club coach. But if you check on the dashboard, you can also see that, hey, in these first three months, how have they been doing? What are, are they, or I guess two months, what are they turning in some education awards? Are the officers going to training? Because you want to know that before you get too deep into it. Right. Officer training matters. I, I tell, okay. just um, on that, I tell clubs, if, if you're not going to get trained, I'm not going to coach you. <laughs> I didn't, I did, I, I'm, I'm tough with them. I, I was like, you have to step up. If I, if you want me to work, I'm going to be expecting you to do the same. Right. And I think that's good advice. One final request. May we collect your photo and post it in Facebook. Yeah. Oh, we I have forgot this. to do so that. Everybody, just... everybody look forward. Oh, and I'm going to let Carol have the last fun? word. Can so, we do something yes. fun? If all of us do something like this or... Yeah. Woohoo. Okay. I, I think I captured it. Let me make sure it came out. Okay. I did. Thank All you. Right. Good job. Good job. Thank you for remembering that I forgot to do it. All right. It was a pleasure. Thanks so much. And you guys have a great year. I'm going to be looking at your dashboards come October 1st. Okay and see how many coaches you have out there. I was gonna say I have the feedback form on chat and I also put the, the one slide file, the process, the little D50 coaching process. I have attached it in the chat just, just for a quick reference, but we will find, I'll work with Thomas to find a way to put it up on the website and the recording as well. Recording and, and the slides, the one slide for the D50 process. So let me know if you have any trouble accessing the file or the feedback form. Maybe we can stay on for five more minutes, Christy, to, for people to just- We can leave the Zoom up for people to grab that for their own yeah. benefit. Right. Uh, we uh, thank you so much, Carol, for being our guest today. It was thank a Thank all of you for your work as coaches, as area directors, as Toastmaster leaders in District 50. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Right, bye-bye. 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 Hey, Carol. Yes. The, I just sent uh, an evaluation email should be showing up um, from a, a website that another district created for evaluations. So it has all the information in there for your, your pathways evaluation. Great. And so, um, so. It hasn't come through yet. Okay. I sent, I sent it to the, the email. I, Christy gave me your email, so I sent it to that. And it may, may take a little bit to get to, to come through. Okay. I'll look for it. Thank you so much, Stu. I appreciate you doing that evaluation. Well, and thank Yay! you, Stu. And as Violet mentioned earlier, there's another benefit to being a club coach. Look at those projects in levels four and five. Those are all about working with teams. Isn't that what you're doing as a club coach? So you not only get the club coach credit, the year of service credit, 
you get that opportunity to have the right project for you to work through that lead in your volunteer organization, manage change, high performance leadership. I mean, there's a whole slew of them. With experienced leaders, you don't have to go in order, like didn't finish level one to two to three, look ahead, level four and five, you'll see some great projects there. Well, thank you for mentioning that, Violet. Thank you. For mine, I, I, I just finished level four this past week with, you know, an online seminar and then uh, hosting an online uh, meeting for that. And then, you know, motivation, motivating others to be, being the contest master for a club contest. Like, okay, level four is finished. I saw I've almost finished. I say level five will be done HPL for a division contest. And then I'm like, okay, wait, I put together a team for being the division director. So there we go. Level five is finished. Now I just need to be a club coach or mentor a new club. And I got DTM number two finished. Good job. Excellent. Um, Stu, I sent you a, another.